offered this as well. So, um, so Dr. Ira Glick is from the class of 1957, and he's a professor emeritus of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford University School of Medicine. Dr. Glick spent his entire career since Dickinson following people's lives with and without treatment. And he mentioned to me that he credits Dickinson for instilling in him lifelong learning and staying active in sports, particularly basketball and tennis. Today, he's gonna to talk about how brain systems work, how exercise and continued learning can change crucial parts of brain communication. He'll focus on how to improve thinking and remembering and based on recent research on the effects of exercise and athletics on aging brain brains. So with that, I wanna turn it over to you, Dr. Glick. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for the sweet introduction. Uh, uh, I, I know uh, uh, my, my family would have, would have enjoyed it. Um, what, I, what I wanted to do for this alumni weekend was just give a, a short and sweet presentation on um, lifetime, lifetime learning um, and exercise through the life cycle and what it, what it does to you. Really, my, uh, you wanna, uh, Dickinson did wonders for me, thanks to my uh, teachers and my classmates. Um, next slide, Laura. Uh, this was, this was um, Carol Johnson and myself on graduation. It's on the, uh, in the yearbook, which I have behind me, you can see. Oh, okay. And it's been a, a nice follow-up. Uh, Herb Silverstein remember, remembers that. Next slide. Um, the, uh, the message really is very simple. Uh, the, the message is keep doing, um, keep learning through your whole life cycle and keep exercising and they, they work interactively um, is, is the short and sweet message. The, uh, it, to make it a little, a little bit more, I'll elaborate on these points above. Uh, what physical activity does is it contributes to a sense of purpose and how the sense of purpose influences how likely we are to exercise. When you exercise, it promised people to feel capable of setting new goals and developing new or augmented purpose in life. And when you have goals and a sense of purpose, you wanna be healthy and live long enough to fulfill them. So it's a whole interactive uh, process. This is from uh, someone named Gretchen Reynolds. And I, I wanna say all of what I'm giving to you is from a whole, I've got a whole pile of uh, literature here, articles on all this. And it's uh, uh, the, 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 the science is uh, not randomized controlled studies, but it's mostly correlational studies, but it all adds up to this same message that there's an interaction that works to help both and helps to make our life long enough. So that's really the, the whole point. Next slide. So what I'll do, the outline I want to do is short introduction, which you pretty much just heard. I'm not going to go into a whole history and advances in medicine and the new neuroscience. That's a whole separate lecture. I have a lecture on how medicine has progressed and what it does to brain and body. Um, the, whole, the whole summary of that has to do with uh, the science behind all this and what it all adds up to. Today, I'm gonna to just highlight um, what this next, uh, uh, next uh, section does. Exercise and sports effects on the brain and body. That's really the, the main point uh, of that. So to start off with uh, exercise and sports, um, uh, obviously there's both good what it does um, is exercise increases mental and physical health. Presumably, there's a very strong correlation, and correlation is not causation. It cause, there's a co strong correlation with decreasing illness, both medical and psychiatric. It increases life skills and productivity, and it increases the ability to deal with stress. Next slide. Um, obviously, exercise and uh, physical activity 
uh, is also associated with the bad. It's associated with increased violence, doping, cheating, injuries. For example, a big, big focus now on concussion and traumatic brain injury. And uh, it's associated with violence. Uh, I just I just did the first scientific paper on mass shooters and uh, what's behind, uh, it, it's never been studied in what's behind that. We found that they're associated, uh, the, the mass shooting is associated with brain illness, for example. So they can be the good and the bad. Next slide. Now, um, in terms of exercise and the brain and the body, Learning is basically the acquisition of new knowledge. It has to be consolidated and securely stored. And we use sleep, hard as it is to believe, to reinforce learning and memory. And what exercise does, it works on the genes to increase chemicals, um, this, um, um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor works in the brain to increase mental function and memory. So again, think of this with the easiest way to explain this. The brain is like a computer um, and it all, it works to get, if you use it, it works better. If you don't use it, it doesn't work so good. These chemicals don't work. The genes don't work, but it's, it's a complicated system. Next slide. Um, and how exercise it changes brain communication as we age. What it does is connects the different portions of the brain's memory center. They start interacting in complex and new ways after regular exercising, which sharpens memory function. So if you use the computer, it works better. If you don't use it, um, your, uh, everything goes down. Next slide. Um, now, the, what the physical activity does in improving brain health is, it uh, again, getting into the science of this, which is not what you wanna hear on alumni weekend, but nevertheless, it increases uh, neurons in the hippocampus um, it slows the loss of brain volume. Um, in other words, when, the, when your brain ages, the, you lose brain cells and the volume increases. And then you don't want that to happen. You wanna use physical activity to slow that loss. And it increases the synchronized activity through the medial temporal lobe. Um, and it works on the frontal part of your brain right up here um, um, to have better ability to learn and retain information and apply it logically in new situations. That's the, the medial temporal lobe and the frontal lobe. Next slide. So athletic performance, or to repeat, exercises increases your athletic performance, needless to say. It improves your athlete, your athletic performance, uh, the psychological, your, your psychology can improve your athletic performance. And when you're not, when you get just, you're sitting there, not moving. Um, most people, not everybody, finds they're associated with stress, moderate anxiety. So for us, uh, there's Stanford, we have a whole, we have a whole exercise athletic program study doing psychotherapy and medication when this all doesn't work right. Next slide. Um, before I do that, questions on, on what I brought in or again, Paul, uh, Herb, anybody want to add in to that? Feel free, there's yell out muted you. So if you think you're not on mute, go ahead and unmute yourself. Anybody? Doesn't look like it. Okay. All right. I um, have a question. Um, I'm just, I'm finding this very interesting. Are these slides going to be available to us at all? I would love to pass some of this information on 
to uh, to someone I'm thinking of in particular who could sure if you if you think this is worth it I'm happy to share with my uh, my Dickinson uh, uh, classmates and others be be thrilled and all I ask is just uh, comments hostile and otherwise uh, just <laughs> let me know whether this is useful or not okay thank you Herb anything you want to add to this or Paul. Does all sound reasonable? I'm again, again, I'm emphasizing this isn't the hardest data science, but it's it's pretty consistent. Um, so I think I think there really is something to it. All right, no questions. Hopefully, I'm being clear. Uh, but again, don't hesitate to interrupt. All right, so exercise indeed disease. What this whole literature. I've talked about the um, uh, non-disease now. When you talk about disease, uh, this whole literature suggests that staying active, hard as it believe, decreases day-to-day -day problems. And how? Because it allows your brain to function better. It increases the multiple brain regions associated with learning and memory. Again, just to repeat, it's like turning on the different parts of your brain that tend to become inactive if you don't use it. Um, and interestingly, if there's a protective effect against some neurogenerative diseases. Um, so um, it, it actually works not only to treat active disease, but protective. Next slide. Let's talk about cancer. Everybody knows Everybody understands what I'm talking about when we talk about cancer. Um, and I, I, I threw in this, uh, I found this quote from Hippocrates, <laughs> hard as it is believed written 2000 years ago, walking is man's best medicine. Um, regular exercise is associated with decrease of a number of different cancers. It decreases the risk of, of tumor recurrence and as in death, um, something that uh, most of us are going to face someday. Um, next slide. Nobody's laughing. I'm, is anybody listening here? Um, um, More. <laughs> okay. I hear you. I heard uh, that. You heard that. Okay, Patricia. Uh, uh, exercise, how it benefits against cancer. There are indirect effects. The decrease in oncogenesis. Uh, I think uh, Paul and Herb, correct me. I think that means decreasing the, the increase in the number of cells. Um, did I get that right, Herbie? Okay. Um, it, de it decreases circulating sex hormones, as in uh, progesterone, estrogen, estrogen, testosterone, and it decreases. It increases the antioxidants, which work against um, brain, uh, brain, the, in, the increase of the bad cancer cells. Not only that, it's interesting. Um, it combats the metabolic conditions, uh, obesity, inflammation, and insulin resistance as against, uh, as uh, here we're talking about diabetes. And this is this is from a very good, very scientific journal, uh, the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, so uh, I strongly, uh, um, again, I'm here I'm talking about some real solid science. Next slide. Uh, the way it works, again, it's maybe more than you wanna know. Uh, exercise works on the muscle fibers, the muscle fiber releases proteins called myokinase, which induces the ap ap top aptosis, aptosis, which again works against the brain, uh, works against the, uh, the cancer. These are direct effects. So I've talked about indirect effects and direct effects as best we know the science. We still, again, for all those listening, we still don't understand how the brain works, but it's, it's, um, these are where we are here in 2021. Next slide. So in summary, in conclusion, pulling together, 
the um, pulling together both the um, um, the pathology and the normal functioning. The, the rationale here is exercising the brain and the body helps over a lifetime. And for those people on, on today, these are not, this is not directed directly at the students in Dickinson now. It's lifetime. I'm emphasizing lifetime. How? It increases physical and mental fitness, uh, as in decreasing obesity and arteriosclerotic heart disease and a bunch of other, um, um, you know, obesity is associated with cardiovascular disease, pulmonary disease, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Why does this all work? Because you become less vulnerable to both disease and cognitive decline. And uh, I emphasize that word vulnerable because we're all genetically programmed to die of certain diseases and to have cognitive decline at different, different times of our life, including Alzheimer's and dementia. But, but, and this important issue, you become less vulnerable to, vo to both as you keep that brain going, learning and exercising. It teaches you skills. That is, um, I'm, I play basketball. Uh, the practice skills, preparedness, um, thinking on your feet, being exposed to stress, um, all those things happen when you're exercising, you're doing athletics, and when you're, when you're learning. And you have a much better sense of yourself, which, uh, which promotes, um, promotes good feelings about yourself. So that, that was the, I, I started off doing this. I wanted to make it short and sweet for alumni weekend. And then I've added a whole bunch of stuff I came with since uh, I formulated um, this lecture, the shortened, shortened version of a lecture that I gave to the students two years ago. Um, next slide. There was some interesting stuff I just, I just saw. And actually, yesterday's New York Times had a whole thing on exercise right in their, um, their headlines. They had a very, very interesting, back from 1934, when we were all around when we, some of us were born. Um, but um, here's something I found in the literature. Uh, the lifestyle modifications to promote healthy aging, which is the kind of questions that I often get. Uh, one, maintain your social connections. I, that I've, been, I've been talking about that this whole lecture. Two, stay engaged in meaningful work. I've been really pushing um, my patients, my connections, my friends, stay engaged in meaningful work. We all need second acts, third acts. And um, don't the old uh, quitting when you're 65 to sit around and look out the window is ridiculous. I mean, I have a good view looking out at the Golden Gate Bridge, but still um, I'm doing something. My, and these guys on the calls, uh, Herb Silverstein's a fascinating pianist. He's doing all kinds of things in his practice. Paul Covnett's doing all kinds of things since he's retired from his work. He's in second and third act. Keep moving and exercises, do something. Um, it doesn't have to be full court basketball. I just came back from playing in the Masters tournament in Florida for two, two, uh, five days, two games a day, full court. Just doing something 15, 30 minutes a day will uh, do wonders for your body and your brain. Um, choose foods that increase high density lipoprotein don't ask me uh, exactly how this works, but uh, Dr. Kovnat could explain it. And uh, one thing I strongly believe in is um, try not to eat too much, don't get fat, because uh, there's a strong association, as I've been emphasizing, on overweight and dying young. Next slide. Um, I found this in the Times a couple weeks ago. This is from a world-class shooter in Eastern Europe, Chandro Tomar, who's still, she does world-class sharpshooting uh, where you have to have exquisite 
control of your um, hand-eye coordination. Uh, she, I love this quote, all the household chores I used to do from a young age. She's continued, it's important to stay active. Your body might grow old, but keep your mind sharp. And what between the lines, what she's saying, keep your mind and body, 89 years old. Next slide. Uh, Jane Brody, last week's New York Times, she's there. Um, she, she and Gretchen Reynolds do a wonderful column in the Science Times on Tuesday. Um, she had some very interesting stuff, which I thought would be relevant for, for this lecture. Uh, she says, um, strive to do what you love, your passion, for as long as you can do it. If, the, if uh, things stop a certain activity, modify it change it, substitute another activity. Keep doing is the message. And she's saying, this is amazing. Uh, she writes this weekly column. Uh, I was really fascinated to read this. I consider daily physical activity to be as important as eating and sleeping. And uh, that, that, that to me was really fascinating. Next slide. She continues. She can, says, without regular exercise, you can expect to experience a loss of, listen, look, listen to this, muscle strength, endurance, coordination, balance as against falling over, climbing the stairs, flexibility, mobility, bone strength. Um, you know, the women are always, Women are rightly concerned about um, bone density. And as I've been emphasizing, cardiovascular and respiratory function. And again, it's all in this pile of, um, of uh, articles and lectures, uh, articles that I've found in the literature. It's all so consistent with that. Next slide. So her final advice, Interesting. Try to combine your passion with your talent. And uh, if a guy like me can make it, the people on this call can do much better than me. And um, for the women here, men, try not to listen here. Choose a supportive life partner who's willing to share the mundane tasks of daily life and step up for extra duty when needed. That is working together to, um, to, do your, to do your work, raise your kids, and run a household. And what I, what I say to my, uh, I have another subspecialty in marital and family therapy. What I say to everybody, including my kids, the only reason to be in a relationship is to be there to help other people, to help your partner, rather than to, um, uh, to play out problems from your early life. So this is really, I, I think, terrific advice from, uh, from Jane Brody, who's, uh, who's very smart. Next slide. So um, in, I guess in summary, in terms of science and sports, connect the two over a lifetime, keep on studying and moving. And last slide. I started, the, uh, I started the lecture with the picture of uh, Carol Johnson and I, uh, the gates of uh, um, the campus at Dickinson. I'll end with this slide from a recent tournament that I played on, keep on moving. Uh, let me, uh, uh, I promised Laura I wouldn't go too long. Um, let me open this for questions, comments, good and bad. So Ira. Yeah. Herb, Herb is talking. Please. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. So I'm, I'm an example of everything that you just said. <clears throat> Eight five, I'm still working three days a week. I lift weights three days a week with a trainer. I yeah. ride 60 miles to 80 miles on a bike. And I feel great. And uh, I think everything that you said is correct. And I've just been doing it, and I, don't, I didn't know about <laughs> how good it was for you, but I did it because it felt good, and it kept me busy. 
Well, that, that, that's, ter that's terrific. For those of you who don't know, Herb is a world famous ear, nerves, and throat guy and pianist. He's played in right. all kinds of jazz festivals, composer and player. Uh, so there's a testimonial from someone, uh, someone beside me and Jane Brody. Ira, while we're waiting for others to unmute and ask a question, I have a question in the chat that says, what is the role of athletic competition? Uh, I love athletic competition. Um, needless to say, I'm anxious before I play. But once you get in there, uh, if you've done it before, when you're younger or in midlife, it's, uh, you do the best you can. As you get older, you realize that athletic competition is not just to win, underlining win, but more importantly, uh, to, to, uh, to learn how to interact with others and to help others, Laura. Um, athletic competition, just, it's just at a higher level. Just playing in this master's tournament, uh, playing with guys in there, uh, they had different categories, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s. Um, it was fascinating to see how people, um, people worked in athletic competition. Um, you, I always say you can partially tell a person's personality, good and bad, on how they do in athletic competition. Hey, hey Ira, I, yeah. I want to make another comment. You know, <clears throat> recently they, we found that hearing loss has a lot to do with uh, memory loss and dementia. Mm. And, uh, and um, so it's, it's very important that if you're losing your hearing to have it corrected with a hearing device. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, it, the brain needs to be stimulated and it's the same thing that you're talking about exercise. Well, this is exercising your brain from the hearing part of the brain. Absolutely. And it's so important to, to keep your hearing up in the normal range if, if you can do it. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm, I'm never above, uh, Herb, that's a crucial point, thanks Herb, and I'm never above asking people to repeat uh, so that I hear it. I, I run a lot of uh, conferences. We do, uh, again, for those who are interested, we do a monthly salon, the smartest people I can get all over the country, and I do one locally here, where uh, we all sit in a circle and just trade ideas. I, re I highly recommend it. Steven? Um, thanks, Laura. And how does the what's the role of music in this? Like, what are the benefits uh, from music that you may not receive in the same way athletically? Herb, go ahead. Right. Uh, so um, the um, I think music helps stimulate your brain, and um, especially if you're uh, if you're a talented to play it and to uh, compose do things like, like I do, uh, it just seems to, to make you feel good and, and give you another project to, to keep you busy and to make you feel like you're doing something and enjoying it. So uh, I think just another, another way of um, staying healthy with the exercise, with a good diet, doing various things that you like to do and not uh, up, you know, and, and and I'm not retiring. Every, well, my patients ask me all the time, Doc, when are you going to retire? I say never. When I drop, that's when I retire. When right. I can't. Do. Right. And so that I, staying busy is very important, I think. Yeah. And Herb, don't you think that different, uh, different aspects of mu uh, music hit different parts of the brain and force the brain to pull together the different sounds, which I think is important. Um, and it's good. And, and music goes back to prehistoric man. There's always been music, uh, prehistoric and in tribal cultures, music has been an important part. Uh, not only, not, not classical music, but with drums, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I have a Thank couple you. questions in the chat that I'll read out. Please. Uh, are there any bad habits that can ne negate the positive effects of learning and exercises over a lifetime? Any what? Are there any bad habits that can negate the positive effects of learning and exercises over a lifetime? Well, you can no. you can overdo it. Um, that, yeah. uh, you can overdo it where people um, 
just want to do exercise all day, wear out their bodies, um, and ne neglect other part of a, of a strong intellectual life. Uh, that's one. Um, I had that early slide on the bad, uh, the bad effects of exercise, you know, using drugs to enhance athletic performance. I think, I hope that's speaking to the question that's being asked. Laura, do you think, am I answering the question okay? I believe so. I don't see a follow up from her specifically. Hey, Ira, I'm, I'm going to have to say goodbye. I have another okay, meeting thanks. to go. Thanks. Excellent lecture. Very good. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks. I have, I have another comment in the chat that she um, so appreciates this and all the examples. She's found that when she doesn't work out regularly, my body really starts to break down. Right. This is Elena Martinez Vidal. And if you knew my dad, he was always working out or playing basketball until he really couldn't. Right. Yeah, no, that's true. Once you stop, it's very hard to get back in. That's why the Jane Brody advice and the Ira Glick advice keep going. People always ask me how I managed to do it. And the answer is I never stopped. Um, after Dickinson, I went to medical school, and while I was, uh, I would, every week I would be playing two or three times a week. Um, I never stopped uh, when I was, uh, through my whole life in the Army, um, in practice, traveling around the world. I was in Africa last year, and I, um, every place I go, I play, I run. I was in Rwanda. I was playing in Rwanda with the men and women uh, who were tougher than I was uh, just to keep going. And it's a wonderful way to stay connected with people and to keep your body in shape. So the chat question is terrific, um, very helpful. Um, yeah, thank you for putting, putting everybody on there. Um, uh, I keep, have keep a question. Going. Please. Um, I'm wondering what you can suggest for somebody who is super busy, has been doing caregiving for like elderly parents. And we tend to be more intellectually based and not moving around enough. And I'm starting to get concerned about myself and my own health. So if you're really busy and, and also on my mother's side, my mother, her sister and her father all had some forms of dementia. So what would you suggest for a busy person who doesn't have much time to be active to do that might help stave off developing like dementia and things like that in later age? Okay, great question. Very common question. It's asked a lot. Uh, look, uh, it's wonderful that you're taking care of your elderly patients. I think I had a slide earlier. Um, it, exercise works to delay dementia, it can't stop it. Uh, we don't have any treatments for it, as you know. But what you've got to do to, so that you can be a good caretaker as well as to have a life, you've got to say at some point to get somebody else in there to help so that you can keep using your brain and your body. I can't be any more direct than that. You've, you've got to do it, even though you've got the, you, you're doing the wonderful thing of taking care of your, of your parents. Did I speak directly to your question? Yes, I was just thinking of some small things to maybe be able to do in short time spans that might help make a difference. Exercise, do exercises. I do exercise every morning for five minutes at best. Walk around the block, anything you can do. That's what that Jane Brody quote is. Do what you can, um, but don't do nothing. I can't be clearer than that. We have some additional okay, questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, go what ahead. Is the, what is the best approach to rebuild or jumpstart a renewed interest in exercise with anxiety and depression? Um, you want to jumpstart. So I assume the questioner, the person who asked that question is saying, I've not been doing anything. I want to get going. You could join. There are two ways to do it. One, if you got the money, hire a personal trainer to get you going. Start slow and you gradually build up. Um, uh, you know, you walk one block, two blocks, three blocks, then you maybe trot, then maybe you run, uh, run around the block, then maybe you run a half mile, et cetera, et cetera. Or 
uh, you can join uh, the, these all these different classes. I, I've never really been into them. These um, what do they call them? Uh, the different class exercise classes that that uh, that are all over. It, it I strongly recommend that you know where groups get together and they do exercises and there's all these different um, kinds of exercise classes to get in. Am I speaking, to, uh, Laura? Do you think that's the answer to that question? believe so. And I know for me, I schedule my appointments with someone else because then it's easier for me to keep it. Rather, otherwise, I'd be like, oh, I'll walk later and then I don't. But if I know someone's waiting on me, that really helps me. Right. Absolutely. Schedule. All right. Great Another great. question. Um, is exercise defined as moving or sweating it out to the max? In other words, do the benefits kick in only at a certain level of moving? Yeah, in other words, yes, exercise is defined as moving that body. You can't just uh, stay still. Keep keep moving. Um, I, I think I'm answer. I think I'm answering that question. Is, is that answer right or no? No, you're shaking your head. I don't know. Um. Um. Here's another question. I've missed many classes at the gym so much during the pandemic. Substituted hikes in nature, which has been wonderful. Eager to get back to the gym this week now that I'm fully vaccinated. This is just the encouragement and inspiration I needed. Thank you. Oh, well, that is really sweet. Get back to that gym and keep hiking. Um, <laughs> my wife hikes three times a week, two, three miles, and uh, um, it, I, I can't be more encouraging. That's terrific that you're doing that. Here's another one. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. My father adhered to all of this, played tennis until age 90, ate moderately and well, listened to music always. Dementia presented itself at 90, but he died at 95 without being on any medication. He set a good example, as do you, Ira. Oh, that is really sweet. I'm, uh, uh, that's a wonderful testimonial. I think, I think you have summarized my lecture with an anecdote. <laughs> That's, that's absolutely on target. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's absolutely uh, illustrative of what I've been saying. Mm -hmm. Again, it doesn't prove that uh, what I've been saying is right, but it's certainly a strong testimonial. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the literature backs up everything you said as scientifically based. Um, someone mentioned that they appreciated the comments about music. Uh, she took up singing lessons when she retired, and it was very hard. So many different muscles to work at the same time. Uh, well, again, very good point. I, um, music music uh, is, as I've said earlier, is crucial to keeping that brain functioning, keeping those different, different parts of your brain connected and uh, working together. There's a, there was a whole long thing. There was an article... That, again, one of my Dickinson classmates, Joel Levin, uh, sent around about the new, uh, the new. It's about the selfish gene and about how that that is all um, uh, from the past and wrong. The uh, the way the genes now work, and I won't go into this. They all work together with uh, producing mitochondria, which um, works together to bring quotes harmony, cooperation, competition and improved life. So um, again, I like I liked that question. Keep going. Someone else recommends that, um, they highly recommend vigorous walks in nature if you can slip away. Even 30 minutes would do it. I think Absolutely. this is answering another question. She says, also try yoga videos in your home. Great for mind and body. I love it. I love both recommendations. <laughs> Here's um, one you'll love. It says, it's, uh, it's obvious this works. You look terrific. <laughs> okay, so now if you only say that to my wife uh, <laughs> and somebody else says what well, I had mentioned that I put working out on my to-do lists and then I have to do it so those are all from the chat at the moment anybody else want to ask unmute themselves and ask John yeah Laura uh, Ira this is great and I, I uh, it reinforces sort of the things that uh, in, a, in a concise way that we've been hearing all along 
One thing that you see all over the internet, which of course makes it authoritative, <laughs> is the importance of things like crossword puzzles and Sudokus and that kind of thing on the mind. Uh, and it, it's touted as sort of the sort of the the the, the silver bullet. Uh, at, is, how important is that uh, the, the 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 that type of activity? Well, I, I that, that's a, uh, John. That that's a very good uh, question. Um, I have a bias. Uh, obviously, if you listen to me, uh, I like things doing things more active. When I see that stuff in the in the New York Times and the San Francisco paper, it, to me, I always think people just sitting around. What can I possibly do? So they do a crossword puzzle again. Yeah. Fine, fine, but I think we, I think we're all, especially Dickinson graduates, are capable of more than that. Filling out crossword puzzles. Um, uh, again, I, my wife and I have discussed this. She's a painter. She used to be a fashion designer, and uh, when I see her doing that stuff, I say, you know, go paint, produce. Uh, don't, don't just, um, jo don't, don't just take in, put out. Do, do, do things to keep that brain going more, more actively. So again, I'm, uh, I, that's a biased answer and, and maybe people disagree, but uh, I think we're all capable of more. Well taken, thank you. Right. I will comment on, someone else mentioned uh, knowing somebody who did really well um, in the aging process. So it, I should mention my grandfather on my, my dad's side, he lived to 103 and was very active and didn't use a cane and still drove until the last year of his life. And he, um, he golfed throughout his life. And I think that that helped him tremendously with his balance. And once he hit 90, he decided he needed to be more active. And he, when they moved into a retirement community, he walked almost a mile every morning around the perimeter of the community. And he, he did, he participated in some exercise classes and other things. And he had been a, a college professor. So he was intellectually minded as well, but the exercise, I think, tremendously benefited him. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think golf is terrific. As I, uh, I said to that guy uh, who uh, used to be president, you know, a little less golfing and a little more president, uh, uh, presidential stuff would be helpful. But other than that, Stephen, go ahead. As Truman Bullard and other people um, on this call will attest, I, this body did not play lacrosse or football. I did, however, play the clarinet and then added saxophone and flute as a work in process, a progress. But I went back to it after about 10 years. I took um, uh, a hiatus when I was working on Wall Street and I went back to it about 10 years after I graduated in 1980. And it really um, did something great. But don't be afraid, even if it was 30, 40 years ago, if you um, played an instrument in high school or college, it's not too late to go back. Um, and I know people that didn't touch an instrument for 30 years that went back and they play very successfully. But if they were a top-notch musician and they made all state and did um, bands and orchestras and jazz groups in high school and college, there's no reason they can't rekindle it. Absolutely. That's, Stephen, that's a great point. Um, one of my camp friends, I went to, when I was at Dickinson, I used to work in the mountains um, as a waiter. With, I worked with Gary Marshall. We, were each, uh, we, used, to, we used to do stuff for carrying uh, bags for serving meals for a dollar a tip. And um, Gary wow. was a, a lifelong basketball player with me. And um, uh, playing, uh, playing, and he played the drums as well. And that, that's a terrific comment. Uh, I, I think keep going, keep doing it. And second and third acts, this, uh, another guy from the, who ran the camp, uh, when the owner's kid was, became a cardiologist and now he's retired. He does weekly concerts at uh, retirement homes, assisted living places, yeah. which are terrific. Well, the other side of it is that you never stop thinking like a musician. I mean, there's plenty of people that were top-notch players. And if they go to Lincoln Center and they listen to chamber music or symphony, they're going to analyze that whether they realize it or not. Absolutely. So it's a question of rekindling it. 
Absolutely. I, and I love, again, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do much with Mermaid Players, but one of the things I love doing now is I listen, listen to the Metropolitan Opera free streams that are on every day. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. Thank you. Um, we Thanks. have else that said, thank you so much for this. It's a wonderful kick in the pants to keep moving. Um, someone else asked, says, uh, Madeline asked if exercise needs to involve sweating. I'm assuming that exercise, even without sweating, is helpful. I was dancing yeah. three nights a week until the pandemic, never sweat, but it was great exercise. I agree. Uh, no, you exercise uh, can be with or without sweating. It's not like when you're a kid. Uh, I'm, I play ball in, in San Francisco three or four times a week. And I, I also, uh, uh, I, I, I find I'm, I, it's so cold here that uh, uh, most of the time that I, I don't sweat. Although my wife says, uh, you're stinking up the house. Other than <laughs> that, um, it, it's fine. I know for me, um, I wear a Fitbit and that little nudge if I haven't moved in an hour really helps me get up. And just if I see I'm at 9,500 steps, I will, you know, move to get that 10,000. So that for me has helped just that visual reminder. Visual and goals. I didn't and emphasize goals. goals enough in this lecture. Have goals and try to reach them. Always try to do more than you can do. Again, I'll give Dickinson an odd. I was in the class, as you heard, with some very smart uh, men and women uh, who I've remained lifelong friends with. And, and they, they inspired me to set goals which are way better than I thought I could ever achieve being a mediocre high school, um, uh, high school kid um, and, and, uh, and what I did. And my, my brain didn't get together until I got to Dickinson where they watered me, <laughs> watered me like a plant. Anybody else have any questions? comments. This was very helpful. I think this was yeah. just had a nice encouragement to get yeah, go ahead. keep moving. Uh, um, just a little just a little comment maybe on um, alcohol as as um, a potentially um, not uh, constructive thing to be uh, especially as you age. Um. I, I agree, Martha. Um, I have uh, hard as it is to believe since I, uh, the, the first time in my life that I really drank anything, three or four beers, I threw up in front of Conway Hall. And that's the last, that's the last alcohol intake that I, um, that I really have had through my life. I'm, I'm uh, again, I, uh, my bias is alcohol is not good for your brain over a lifetime. And that includes, again, and I hope I'm a, uh, not alone. I also have a bias against marijuana, uh, which uh, the Times in New York, a lot of states are pushing. Uh, so uh, I'm with you 100%. I'm glad I raised it. I could be dead wrong. Marijuana could be the greatest thing since alcohol. But um, I, I have a bias against it, so I, I'm with you on it. I'm not above, I always, I always tell people, again, and it's in the context of, this, of what I'm pushing this whole lecture. Um, I'll come home from a day at Stanford, walk in the front door 4.30 at five. My wife comes down, we give each other a hug, and I say, um, is it too early to start drinking? And then what we do, we take, we take a glass of wine, Three hours later, we've, we've drunk half of it. And um, that's fine. But uh, thank you for the question. Um, we have someone that says they appreciate the presentation. Thank you for confirming that I'm moving in the right direction. Having played volleyball in high school and at Dickinson, I see myself going back to that level of phys physical activity and rekindling my love for painting and playing the piano and violin. So. Yeah, no, that's very good. And uh, you remind me to say, I put, I pushed that with all my, my four kids and um, three out of the four, uh, I did athletics with all, all the while. The one, the smartest one, my, uh, my older daughter is a pathologist. Uh, she didn't do athletics, but she turns out to be the one that runs every day uh, before she goes works um, running pathology departments at three hospitals in New York. 
So um, I strongly uh, reinforce that. And, and uh, thanks, thanks for that, that point. I, I didn't emphasize with your own kids. It's a wonderful way to bond. Mm -hmm. Yep, and set a good example. Yeah, it's a good example. Kelly says, thank you. I'm still young, but not too active as I focus so much on work. This is a great reminder to keep on moving and to stay in touch with my fellow Dickinsonians. Right. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, I mean, as I keep emphasizing, work's important, but you also want to have a life mm -hmm. in your one life that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So um, a balance. The women, of course, have been saying this for 20 years. Uh, you know, you have to have a balance in life. Uh, you do your work, but work is not going to be your only reward. And often it doesn't give you a reward. Um, I was at uh, the start of the pandemic. Uh, I got laid off from one of the research companies that I was running. Um, and only just recently because people weren't coming out for drug trials. But uh, work should be one part of your life, but not the whole, the whole part. Well, are, are there any other questions? If not, I think that was a great way to end it, that you know, balance is what's so important. And I, I, Laura, I'm open to anybody, uh, anybody, uh, Ira Glick at stanford.edu is my email. Feel free to, um, feel free to call, yell at me, whatever. We haven't had <laughs> enough hostile comments during this. And, um, um, I, I'm happy to uh, stay in touch with people and feel awesome. free to distribute the slides for anybody that, that, that wants them. Thank you. I've had two people ask me, and if anyone else wishes to, you can um, just email alumni at dickinson.edu or catch me here in the chat and I'll write your name down. But thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for making it um, apply to all of our lives and reinforcing that we all know what we should be doing. We need to move more. So. So thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks excellent. for the applause. All right.